Hello, and welcome to Poppy Approved Movie. My name is Poppy. And I'm Natalie. In our podcast, we will review and critique my favorite PG-13 movies. Movies that I wasn't allowed to watch until I turned 13. Every week, Natalie and I will watch a new PG-13 movie. And I'll see if Poppy's movies live up to the hype. Which, of course, they will. Today, we're going to be watching Princess Mononoke. Before we begin, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want it to be spoiled, press pause and come back when you're finished. Now, Buffy, tell me the deep on this movie. Princess Mononoke came out in 1997 with a runtime of 2 hours and 14 minutes. It was written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki, a legendary anime director, leader of the world famous animation studio Studio Ghibli, and responsible for classic movies such as My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, and many others. The movie was adapted into English by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is a comic book writer who wrote one of the best comics of all time, Sandman, which is now adapted into a Netflix show. Way, and I mean way too mature for you, Nat. <laughs> Not ready yet. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. Very, very dark. Oh, man. But it was good. I just finished watching it yesterday. The main stars are Yoji Matsuda and Billy Crudup, who voice Ashitaka and Yuriko Ishida and Claire Danes, who voice San or Princess Mononoke. Fun facts. The American movie studios that distributed Princess Mononoke in English wanted to cut the runtime of the movie. It's a long movie, especially for an animated film. Miyazaki fought to keep the original length. There's even a story that he sent a katana sword to an American studio exec with a note that said no cuts on it. Bro, Miyazaki's a boss. Yeah, that's just like... That's almost kind of threatening. <laughs> it is a threat. Yeah. You can send the guy a sword. That's pretty awesome. Whether it's true or not, it's still pretty cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did watch the movie dubbed in English. Before you boo us for not being purists, we do take notes when we watch our movies in preparation for the podcast. I I wanted it to wanted to watch it subbed, but apparently Daddy can't take notes from the subtitles. So. I'd have to, I have to look down. I don't have the skills to write notes and not look at my writing. This is your fault. I guess. Maybe I should have typed it up. Please accept our apologies. I read that there are many differences as well from the dubbed and sub version. We might have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Well, that's your fault. Okay. So what do you think, Matt? Well, I really liked it, but it was like, I was really confusing towards the end like there's a lot of visuals and stuff so i was kind of getting confused on what was happening but overall i really liked it i give it a four stars four stars oh i thought you were gonna like it more than that you didn't care for it too much at the end is that what happened i just started getting really confused there was a lot of stuff going on you know yeah even i when i did the recap i actually looked up some information to make sure i got it right and there were some recap mistakes that i made that i went back and fixed afterwards so. also there was a lot of blood sometimes it kind of grossed me out even though it is animated it's still very all bloody and gross i wonder that if it's an animated movie then just cutting a dude's head off is fine yeah there were so many severed heads and arms and legs i know that's cool but I wonder, like, if that movie had severed arms and heads of he real humans, like, not animated, yeah. would it be rated R? Probably. Probably. All right. Why don't we get into the recap? Sounds good. We meet our hero, Prince Ashitaka, which is, they never call him Prince after that, just that one scene. Well, because then he leaves and he's no longer Prince. I guess, but I would tell, if I were a prince, I would tell everybody, I'm like, hi, that's my name, Prince Papi. But he didn't, he just told people his real name, I guess. Yeah. So Prince Ashitaka and his trusty red elk, Yakul, which Yakul is cool, they fight Nago, a boar god who has been possessed by a demon who is about to attack his village. Holy water, holy water. <laughs> holy water would have worked. He didn't know. He didn't have any. <laughs> Ashitaka succeeded in stopping and killing the demon, but his arm is cursed in the process. No, because his eyes were going red like, no, thank you, sir. But then he shot an arrow right in that dude's eye, so killed him. I didn't think that it would actually kill him, but I guess since it's, like, his eye and that's his, like, weak point, then it was all good. Maybe his brain was back there, so I got him. Uh -huh. They find an iron ball in Nago's carcass, which they believe is the cause of the curse. 
That night, Hisama, the village wise woman, tells Ashitaka that the curse will spread and he will die. Ashitaka, <laughs> I know, right? Like, you will die. Thank you for coming. I know, it was so quick. He was like, oh my god. I know, like, now what? What do I do? I'm like, um, you die. That's all. <laughs> Good luck. I know. Ashitaka decides to go west and see what started the curse to prevent from dying. No, because they were, it was funny because they are like, thanks for killing him, but you're going to die. So, like, get out. Like, we're never going to, like, I don't want to see you ever again. So leave. No. I think they said you can take it. And just die, or you can try to like fight and survive. So that's when he was. And they didn't kick him out. They didn't banish him. No, there him. was one where they were like, "We'll never see you again," like something like that. Like he left his village. In his travels, he helps villagers from being slaughtered in a battle, and realizes his cursed arm gives him inhuman strength. And he kills some soldiers with his bow and arrow, chopping heads off, chopping arms off. Ashitaka also meets Jigo, a monk who is secretly an agent of the emperor. Jigo tells Ashitaka about the forest spirit. I know he was all super freaked out by the forest spirit. And honestly, they're kind of scary. Like, they even have booties. The forest spirit? Yeah. No, those are the tree spirits. Ah, oh, okay. We'll get to those later. No, the forest spirit is the big one. Ah. Oh. Yeah, the tree spirits have little booties. We'll get to that. that obviously, you really like the little booty part. No, they're just scary. They're, they're like so creepy. cute. What are you talking about? They're creepy. We'll get to that. Hold on. They're like little dolls. We'll get to that. We then see Lady Eboshi leading a caravan of men carrying rice up a mountain. A pack of wolves attacks them, knocking a few of them off the mountain. The caravan attacks back by shooting fireworks at them. Eboshi, Lady Eboshi shoots the mother wolf god, Moro, with a rifle, and Moro falls off the mountain. In the forest at the bottom of the mountain, Ashitaka sees two men who have fallen from the mountain. He helps them and promises to take them to their town. On the way, Ashitaka also sees Princess Mononoke, or San, helping out injured Moro who has raised her as her own child. It was Ashitaka, so gross. She was like sucking the blood out of her. I don't know what she was doing. Like, so, Moro, the wolf goddess, had a sh- got shot by a lady Eboshi and then... Princess Mononoke was just sucking the blood, the poison out? Or maybe she was trying to get the bullet out. Maybe. I was thinking more, like, poison-wise. Because, like, they never, she never spat out anything hard. It was just all this, like, really goopy, blood. B- liquidy blood. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they, they didn't know what was wrong there. Ashitaka also sees the forest spirit, and his arm has a very violent reaction. That's the forest spirit, though, when he sees it. With all, like, the tentacles. Like, it looks like a deer, but with a bunch of, uh... a bunch of, like, tentacles at the top of his head. Yeah, its shadow looks like some sort... I can't remember, but one of the games, I think it was Pokemon XYZ, had, uh-huh. like, a, a deer-like mythical creature as their legendary or whatever it is. Man, man and it looks like all his ears looked like that. So maybe that came... They were connected. Somehow. I bet, yeah, maybe they, they got the idea from Princess Panal. Okay. With the help of the tree spirits, Natalie's favorite, little little cutie pies with Scary. shaking heads that move back and forth. You said they look like Korak seeds, right? Yeah, from Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. They do a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I don't remember that game as well as I do. Anyways, with the help of those tree spirits, Ashitaka takes the two men to their village. It's called Iron Town. It's a fortress where iron is mined. I love how it's called Iron Town. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just Iron Town. Mm-hmm. There like must, there's no name or anything. There must be like Sugar Town, and Rice Town, and uh, anything that you mean. Uh, Gold Town. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Ashitaka finds out the women are the iron workers in the town. That night, he meets with Lady Eboshi, and she tells him that she's making rifles for protection, but intends to kill the forest spirit. We find out that Nago had attacked Iron Town because they were destroying the forest. The iron ball they had found inside of Nago's carcass was a bullet from the rifle. This is totally about deforestation, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I think so, obviously. you know. The deeper message. The deeper message when we get into it is humans destroying uh, Mother everything. Nature. Yeah, destroying everything. Yeah. And how animals in this world have... Uh, are gods and have powers and still can fight back. But with technology like guns, they start to lose these fights. Yeah. Also, she, the people that were like making the guns, what I forgot already Like what happened to them because they were all bandaged up. They were lepers. 
So they had leprosy. So it was like a disease. There's stories where like Mother Teresa would sit and clean people with leprosy and, and leper colonies. They were ostracized for a long time. And so later that night, San attacks the city trying to kill Lady Aboshi. They have so I'm gonna call her San from the rest of the time because they only like named her Princess Mononoke like once. Yeah, they should have just like named it some the the whole movie because like you didn't really hear Princess Mon like I think the only time I heard Princess Mononoke was when um, Lady Aboshi was like talking about her. Yeah, I well, I read somewhere I had looked it up. It has to do with the way Japanese grammar is, and it actually didn't work. Like, the adjective comes after the name or something like that, and so the way it works out that they ended up just using the word san for the English version the whole time. So, oh. Yeah. So anyway, San attacks the city that night, trying to kill Lady Aboshi. They have a duel, but Ashitaka stops them and tries to form a peace between animal gods and humankind. Neither agree, so he knocks them both out. He takes San back to the forest, and he gets shot in the process. Right in the gut, huh? Yeah, it was like, it was, and it went straight through him like a perfect hole. Yeah. It was scary. Oh, and blood he, like, coming out. he only flinched, and then he kept walking. I was like, oh my god. I thought, like, why did he not just fall or die? Obviously, the curse had something to do with it. Maybe him yeah. being cursed has kept him alive. But Ashitaka's gunshot wound worsens, and he passes out. San takes him to an island in the middle of the forest. There, the forest spirit heals his wound, but not the curse. San stays with him, feeding and caring for him until he fully recovers. She even does a little bird action, right? She gets some food in her I mouth. know, it was like a COVID rush. Yeah, COVID-19. This is before COVID, I guess. Yeah, but it was like an actual bird, like how the birds, like, they eat the worm, and then they, like, vomit into their child's mouth. No, they just put it in their mouth, and they make it easier for it's them to chew. It's basically vomiting. No, it's not. It's not vomiting. It didn't get swallowed. Ugh. But she saved his life. Keeping him alive and being able to eat because he wasn't able to eat his food because he couldn't chew on it. Yeah, but still. She's a trooper. Okoto, another god, goes and meets with Moro, who is starting to have effects of the curse from the gunshot wound she received earlier. Okoto is angry and wants to attack the humans before they destroy the whole forest. Moro tries to calm him down, but to no avail. Irontown is attacked by Asano, a warring faction that wants Irontown. And Boshi agrees to help Jigo in exchange for help defending Irontown. We find out Jigo's true motive is to kill the forest spirit and bring back its head to the emperor. It is said that having the head would give him immortality. They go off into the forest, leaving the women of Irontown to defend its gate. I never get why people are all about the immortality. Like, sooner or later, you're going to get tired of living. You would think so. And then, like, you're going to want to... Sometimes I think everybody would. The next, and the other thing is, they why do they they left all the women to defend the town, right? They were these women here are the boss of this town, right? Yeah. Because they're the ones working the mines and doing the iron work. All the work. And then they're also the ones that are fighting. You, fighting while the men are off to hunt or to help out. I think that the men were like fighting in a different area, like they were travel fighting, but then the women. They weren't as much like fighting in like trenches and stuff. They were more like protecting the town yeah, itself. Yeah, that's probably true. The next morning, Okoto falls for a trap and attacks the humans. San and her brother wolves try to help, but it's a losing battle. All of the boars except Okoto are killed along with many of the Iron Town's men. Ashitaka goes with the wolf into the forest to try to stop Lady Aboshi and Jing from killing the forest spirit. Okoto and San are headed to the forest spirit to be healed and meet Moro. The hunters trick Okoto and he leads them to the island where the forest spirit is found. Okoto is now cursed and the demon has taken over. Yeah. I know. No. San tries to stop demon Okoto and is swallowed up by him and is cursed as well. It's all like these wormy worm, black worms of death. I don't know what they call them, tentacles, a worm. I, I think when I was doing it, I was to put like, worms or like snake like appendages or something like that <laughs> okoto went back he got tricked because the jing's men were dressed like boars well the other thing about that is that the boars are obviously like killed real boars but does that mean all their like blood and guts is like lining the furs and you're just wearing it and there's like blood dripping on your head uh, you think that those are skins from the boars 
I think so. Yeah, I don't know. If there were disguises that they Because they were beforehand. still wearing the war paint from earlier. Right. Well, maybe you're right. So, yeah, so they were wearing... <laughs> I didn't and think all, of it that way, but yeah. They said, like, they were wearing skins and stuff. I, I thought they were just disguises, like fake disguises that they had created before, but it makes um, more sense that they would... They would skin the dead boars uh, and then end up using that. Anyway, so Okoto gets fooled, takes them, but Moro was already back. Ashitaka comes and cannot pull San out of the Okoto. Moro attacks Okoto and frees San, and they both die when the forest spirit comes. That's the other thing. So the forest spirit is the one that kills them. He gives life and takes it away? Yeah. Yeah. Ashitaka grabs San and drags her into the water. Lady Eboshi shoots the forest spirit and decapitates it. Jing grabs the head and leaves the forest on the way to deliver it to the Empire. I figured a god wouldn't, like, die that easily, though. But it didn't die, right? Like, then afterwards it had that huge reaction? Yeah, but, like, yeah, that's true. I guess it was still alive for the whole reaction thing to go on. Yeah, I know, but you're right. It didn't seem, because they shoot it once, and then nothing happens, and then they shoot him again. But this time they actually shoot, like, his neck off or something, because they're able to take his head off. What I noticed too is Shashitaka came and was an epic fail. Like he, I thought he was going to be the hero and he came to save Sun and then he gets just knocked out. And yeah, then Moro's the one that saves Sun before, you know, before she dies. Yeah. And then Ashitaka just kind of like, kind of just takes. She, he just gets thrown off. He just gets thrown off. So like he was really kind of, you know, he didn't really do much. Actually, whether he was there or not wouldn't have made a difference in that scene right there. Yeah. The forest spirit's body becomes a large black ooze and grows and grows. It starts to kill everything in its path, and it's going towards Irontown. Ashitaka and San go back to save the women in Irontown and tell them to evacuate to the lake right before the black ooze engulfs the town. The lake, like, can it not go into water, or is it just slowing it down? I don't know. Maybe it's just destroying Irontown first, and then it was eventually going to go to the lake. Oh, but you're okay. right, like, is it not gonna, it's not going to stop there, probably. Ashitaka and San then go and attack Jing and his men and eventually get their head back. Right before Ashitaka and San are devoured by the Black Ooze, they give back the Forest Spirit's head. The Forest Spirit heals the land, making Iron Town a grassy mountain, and then it dies. So the Forest Spirit does die there. Yeah, Yeah, but it's like the Forest Spirit dies, but then there's still forest. Like, there's still nice greenery and flowers and all of that. Yeah, but now it doesn't have that power anymore. Kind of like now, it's like the way our time is now, right? There's no forest spirit, it's just the forest, and nothing can protect the forest anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Ashitaka and San wake up and are both healed from the curse. San for- cannot forgive humans and decides to go back into the forest to live with the wolves. Ashitaka stays back to rebuild Iron Town and says he will visit her. The end. I really did like this movie. It's very sweet and beautiful to look at. Miyazaki's imagination is incredible. It didn't end as a typical Hollywood way, um, but it made sense in the story. Yeah, I really liked that part of it because, like, it made it just made sense. Like, the humans obviously did something bad, and San shouldn't just be able to be like, "Just kidding, it's all right, guys." Like, you almost murdered everyone, but that's okay. No, she's like, "I can't forgive them right now." I'm just going to go ahead back and I'll see you later. Right. Like it's and that so, just made sense. She's lived in the forest the whole time. She's been raised by the wolves. Yeah. It's not like all of a sudden she's going to be like, okay, now I want to work in the iron mill. You know what I mean? And she full heartedly believes that she's like one of the wolves because she basically is because she was like grew up with them all. So why would she all of a sudden become superhuman and go over and hang out with all of them? That's true. And then Ashitaka at the same time, because he can go back to his home, but I think he really liked Iron Town. Yeah. And then, do you think they ever see each other again? Do you think that, because he said, you, we're going to be close, I'll come and visit you. Do you think he ever actually goes and visits her? I think so. Yeah? You think they become friends? Yeah, I think so, at least. Because it was, it was kind of like a romance story, but not really. Yeah. Your sister told me about this, and I looked it up afterwards. Is that in the beginning he gets like a little charm from his sister, uh-huh. uh, Kaya, I think, is the name of the sister, and then it's translated differently in the Japanese version. It's like bride elect, so like his fiance. Oh. So, so that was like he was going to be married or something like that, and so I think they might. I don't know why they changed it because it didn't seem like there was a love story 
between Ashitaka and San. Maybe there was. I kind of saw it because because he was always like, "No, I need to save her," and she's like, "No, leave me alone." Although she took care of him too. I think there was a but scene that... where one of them did say that they loved the other. It would have been different if we knew he was engaged to someone beforehand. Yeah, that whole love story was a little confusing. I think it would have made more sense not being dubbed. I think that could have been some like translation errors. Yeah, I would. I see. So I, I, you I make think a it good would point. have made sense. Like we could tell about the more romance side of things if it wasn't dubbed. Or maybe there was no romance side of things. Yeah. Maybe it was always said that he was gonna be married to this one lady. You know, I you know, and there goes the whole point, right? Like, so how do we know if this is any of the real, right? So maybe the story ends where he's like. Okay, well, let's go get married in another town. You know what I mean? And the Japanese version, it might say that. And so you have to kind of trust the English version to be realistic or real because you have to take their word for it that that was the actual message of the of the of the creator in the first place. Yeah, Daddy, we should have watched the sub. I know. I'm sorry. We now we're all confused. Now we're all confused. I'm going to have to look it up again. Maybe that's why we got so confused. It was the English translation version that confused us. Mm-hmm. All right. Could this movie be made today? I think so. Overall, the only thing that I saw, which was like very, very minimal, was that they were just like whipping animals a lot. Like there was always when Lady Eboshi shot Moro, like they were all walking up the mountain and then they were like all whipping the animals to walk up. So I thought that was kind of rude. Kind of cruel. Okay. Anything yeah. else? That's it. That That's it? Nothing else? Let me try to think. The whole message was kind of like, you guys need to stop destroying things. Yeah. So it wasn't like, yay, we're going to kill everyone. Because like, no, that wasn't the, the point was like, stop killing everyone. That's true. Even back in, what was it, 97? Yeah. Was the, the movie was in 1997, so 25 years ago, they were talking about, uh, you know, keeping our, our forests intact and not destroying our earth. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Does it pass the Bechdel test? This is kind of hard, because would you consider Moro as a female? I think so. I think so. Because then it would. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the Bechdel test. Bechdel test is... A uh, quick little test to check for uh, female representation in movies. There's three questions. We'll start with the first one. Are there two featured women in the story or featured females in the story? Yes, there's Lady Aboshi, San, Moro. And there's also, there was a few named women in Iron Town as well, like the citizen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that passed step one. Past step two, do they talk to each other? Yeah, they all talk to each other. San talks to Boshi and Moro talks to San. And I think um, Lady Aboshi also talks to all of her like female citizens. And the third one is, do they talk about anything other than a man? I did notice a lot of times it was like about um, Ashitaka or some other person. But... I think Moro and San did talk a few times. I can't quite remember because I forgot to write it down, but I do remember them talking about something that was in, I think they were talking about the forest or something like that. Yeah. And then I also think Lady Aboshi once or twice was like commanding her females like how to do something, and it, that didn't really have anything to do with it. And then you're saying that Moro, the... The wolf goddess also talked to San. So yeah. those would be both. So there's a scene where San and Lady Eboshi fight. They have yeah. a duel. And, and I think they, they talk, talk during that other. time. Although, you know, it's funny. It made me think of Edward Scissorhands, which is uh, I don't know, what, episode five. Oh, I have to look back. Where all the ladies in the neighborhood are talking about Edward when he came into town. And all the ladies in Irontown also talked about Ashitaka the way the ladies did in uh, in Ed- Edward Sidrahan's about Edward. Yeah. So it kind of reminded me of that. They're like, hey, come visit us. You're hot or whatever. You know, they were saying funny things. They're just fascinated. Yeah. And then they were putting down all the other men that were in town. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, we, we need a real man, not like those guys or whatever. They're you're pretty awful to them. So. Yeah, it was funny. So it looks like it did pass the Bechdel test if we are using all those other criterias and, and 
Yeah, so I think it did pass that Bechdel test. If the animals count as... I human. think so, obviously, right? I mean, if we were doing a story like, I don't know, like Lion King, you know what I mean? They're all animals. You can't, you know, you have to... There are female animals, so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Then I guess it did make it. Of course, like most of the movies that I want to watch pass the Bechdel test, so there you go. Not. Anything else you want to share before we go? No. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Poppy Approved Movies. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. We put out an episode every Friday. If you want to suggest a movie for us to watch and critique, email us at poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. That's poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. No spaces, no caps. We'll try our best to get to your suggestion. And remember, it has to be PG-13. Next time, we're watching Guardians of the Galaxy. So I hope you join us. I'm Poppy. And I'm Nanu. See you next time. Bye.